Well, let somebody shout hallelujah. When I woke up this morning, I had God speaking to me loud and clear. And he kept repeating the same thing. I will walk. Who can hinder me? I had that one about three times. Then I remember, I, I know where that is written. I know it is written in Isaiah 43, verse 13. It said, I'm God, and there's no one else like me. He said, nobody can deliver out of my hand. Then he said, I will walk. Who can hinder me? And I know what God is saying is, tonight, I will heal. And no one can hinder me. So I want you to tell your neighbor right and left. And tell him or her, whether you like it or not, God is about to make me whole. Say, so tell the other fellow. Now, if you believe that, go ahead and worship him. Go ahead and bless his holy name. Give him glory. Worship him in advance. He said, I will walk. Who can hinder me? I will heal. Nobody can stop me. Oh, Father, I worship you. Ancient of days, I magnify your holy name. I know you are going to make me whole tonight. And nobody can stop you. Nobody. I know you are going to cure the incurable tonight. And nobody can stop you. I know you are going to reverse the irreversible tonight, and nobody can stop. I give you all glory. I give you all honor. I give you all adoration. I just bless your holy name. I just bless your holy name. Oh, Daddy, I just want to worship you. I want to adore you. I want to magnify your holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Ramo Koshaka Ramo Kuchunke Remanta Shanta. Thank you, Lord. Just take control, Lord. Be glorified forever. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. We are serving the God of miracles. Oh, yes, I know. We are serving the God of miracles. I know. Yes, I know what about you and walking God your name is wonderful you are full of wonders there's absolutely nothing you cannot do you are the one who can cure the incurable we thank you for all the testimonies we have heard tonight we thank you because greater ones are about to happen Thank you for what you did on Monday. Thank you for what you did yesterday. Thank you for what you're about to do now. And thank you in advance for tomorrow. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Tonight, Father, do what you alone can do. Make every one of us here completely whole. And take all the glory for it, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. You may please be seated. Um, as at 7 p.m., this evening, a number of babies born during the Congress had increased to 14. <laughs> Nine boys and five girls. <laughs> so let the boys shout praise the Lord. And let the girls shout hallelujah. I must tell you, I'm overjoyed by the testimonies we have had tonight. And they were carrying him to the mortuary. The Almighty God said, I have not finished with him yet. They were already planning how they were going to kill her. Then they discovered that she was bad business. <laughs> uh, 
Those who think that we are finished, they are in for a surprise. From now on, the devil will know that you are bad business. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. Tonight, we want to talk briefly on healing the incurable. They've already told you that we'll be moving on to the new arena tomorrow. But... Uh, The place, I mean, this place will be open as an overflow. And so, and I'm sure the engineers will take care of those who are clapping. Uh, tomorrow will be the day for deliverance. And we were talking about the Lord of hosts. When you talk of an army, uh, every army is basically made up of three categories. The Air Force, the army itself on the ground, and then the Navy. But I have a God who is the Lord of all hosts, whether in the air, on the land, or by the sea. Tomorrow we'll be talking about that. But tonight, very quickly, so I can get out of the way and let God do all he wants to do, we will turn to Jeremiah chapter 32. Verse 27, Jeremiah 32, verse 27. In there, God was speaking, and he said, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Tell your neighbor, my own will not be too hard for God. <laughs> some of the things I'm about to share tonight, I've already shared with some of my children not too long ago. But the rest of us need to hear. God made you. According to John chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3, John 1 from verse 1 to 3, the Bible says in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. And in verse 3 it says, by him were all things made. And there was not anything that was made that was not made by him. God made you. And according to Revelation chapter 4, verse 11, Revelation chapter 4, verse 11, he made you for his pleasure. He made you so that you can give him pleasure, not give him sorrow. He made your hands to clap. Thank you. Psalm 47. Psalm 47 verse 1 says, Clap your hands, all ye people. The Lord made your hands to clap. He enjoys it. He, he enjoys the music that comes from clapping.
That's why that's why he says in his word that even the trees clap their hands and he says this the ocean the floods clap for the almighty god that's why in mark chapter 3 from verse 1 to 5 mark chapter 3 from verse 1 to 5 when he entered into the temple and he saw someone with a withered hand he said ah this is not right if the hand is withered he won't be able to clap you read the story the man did they ask for prayers it was jesus christ who said no hand i made you to clap so don't wither become whole That's why I'm decreeing tonight. You've heard me say it again and again. When I, when I give the altar call and people are coming forward, I've always prayed a prayer. I've always said, those of you who are clapping, your hands will never wither. Amen. Now, before I proceed further, don't worry, I, I promise you know I won't be long. I've told you the story before, at least some of you, of what happened when the couple stood by a little car that broke down by the roadside. Ford, a Ford car. And then suddenly they saw a man come in a very big car passing by, when he saw them, he stopped, came out of his car towards these people with their very little car, opened the bonnet, adjusted one or two things, asked them to start the car again, the car started. And the couple looked at him and said, sir, we are ordinary poor people. From the look of you, you're a great man. Why did you stop? He said, my name is Ford. I made that car. I made it to carry people from place to place, not to die by the roadside. God made you for his pleasure. He's coming around tonight if he sees that your hand is not ready to clap he will do something about it thank you then you want to ask the question why did he make my legs? He made your legs to dance. Oh, when you get home, read Psalm 150 from verse 1 to 4. Psalm 150 from verse 1 to 4. One of the ways he wants you to praise him, to give him pleasure, is to dance. That's why in Acts chapter 3, from verse 1 to 11, Acts chapter 3 from verse 1 to 11 when that lame man said to Peter and John eh, give us money <laughs> Peter said God didn't make you to sit down begging he made you so that you'll be dancing the problem is your legs now let's do something about it the Bible tells us when Peter touched him by the hand the power of God went into his ankle bones and he got up walking, leaping, praising God. He went into the temple and broke up the service there. Where those who have legs were not even dancing. 
The Almighty God makes your legs to dance. From now on, you will have something to dance about. Of course, he also made you, he made your legs so you can run errands for him. That's why the Bible says, how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who go about proclaiming good news. He made your mouth, not just for eating. When you read Psalm 47 verse 1, Psalm 47 verse 1, where he said, clap your hands, all you people, he said, shout unto God. That is why if there's something wrong with your mouth, God will volunteer help. He made your mouth to shout. He made your mouth to testify about his goodness. In Psalm 89 verse 1, Psalm 89 verse 1, he said, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known his faithfulness to all generations. See how glad we ordinary human beings were when we started hearing those testimonies. You can then imagine the Almighty God sitting down in heaven and say, you hear that? They are talking about how great I can be. Some people say, when you come to the house of God, the one thing we don't like about these you Pentecostals is that you are so noisy. Ha! Huh. God likes noise. The winning side is the shouting side. I'm sure, you, I'm sure you have had the testimony before of a daughter of mine who loves to worship God. And suddenly she had <clears throat> cancer of the voice box. The voice box is what you use to speak. And the doctor said, there's only one way to save her life. They have to remove the voice box, which means she will never speak again. And they did the operation. Anybody? At the teaching hospital. And when I went there to see her, she couldn't talk. <laughs> well, I prayed for her. I told her, I have a God who can reverse the irreversible. And for months, for months, she was communicating with my wife because they were classmates by text. And one day I traveled. I think I went to America or somewhere. And then I returned. And as I was getting out of the car, I saw a woman rolling on the ground. Ah, uh, what's this one? What's going on? And she looked at me and said, It's me, Daddy, I can talk again. Anything 
that is trying to shut your mouth, my God will destroy you tonight. Huh? I can go on and on. I can tell you the reason he gave you eyes is so that you can see his glory. The Bible tells us in Psalm 19 verse 1, Psalm 19 verse 1, it said, the, the heavens declare the glory of God. Are you going to be able to see the glory of God if you can't see? I decree tonight, every one of you with any kind of eye problems, receive brand new eyes in Jesus' name. Why did he make your ears? <laughs> the Bible tells us Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Romans 10, 17. It says, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And the Bible says, Without faith, you can't please God. That's why he makes your ears to hear the word of God so your faith can grow. So you can please him. Everything he created in you is for his pleasure. It's to make him happy. Why did he give you a womb, woman? Because he said in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, Genesis 1 verse 28, he said you are to be fruitful and multiply. Ah, I decree tonight every womb here will hear the word of God. You see how happy we were when those people came forward carrying their children, set of twins coming from the pregnancy that they said they were going to evacuate. And God wants you to be fruitful and he wants you to multiply. So every womb, every womb, listen to the word of God. Before this time next year, you will come carrying your babies. I can go on and on, but because of time. That's why whenever he finds something wrong with your body, he's eager to repair. God is more eager to heal you than you are even eager to be healed. Because he made you to give him pleasure. That's why in Mark chapter 1 verse 40 to 45, Mark 1, 40 to 45. When that leper came to him and said, I know you can heal me, but I don't know if you will be willing. He said, ah, I'm willing. And I want to encourage somebody here tonight. You want to be made whole? You shall be made whole. Find the Almighty God talking about healing. He, he, he talks about it with excitement. How I wish it is possible for me to record when he was talking to me this morning. You will see that God is excited. He's about to do something tonight. He said, I will walk. Who can hinder me? Doctors can fail. Don't blame them. 
They are wonderful people, well trained, with very good brains. Ordinary people don't study medicine. So let somebody say, Thank God for doctors. <laughs> However, they are limited. How much do they know? They are not your creator. That's why they failed the woman with the issue of blood. She went from one doctor to the other. They tried their best, but they failed. But there is someone who is called the God of all flesh. That's my daddy. <laughs> the mechanic may fail. The manufacturer will not. Tonight, the God of all flesh is coming the way of somebody. You know, even the most anointed of all pastors can fail. I mean, when you read Ezekiel chapter 37, and you read it from verse 1 to 10, Ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to 10, when God brought a prophet, a very, very important prophet, to the valley of dry bones and said, Can these bones live? The prophet said, <laughs> Almighty God, only you can tell. You know what he was saying? My faith can't handle this. So the Almighty God said, Fine. At least I want you to know you are not God. But could you do something for me? Just prophesy. Ah, that's what I'm doing tonight. I prophesy to every one of you here today. Every dry bone shall live again. Many of you will remember. I'll just give you one or two examples. Don't worry, I'm about to close. Because I can feel the, the anointing of God is already flowing like a river among you. Some of you may not know it, but you're already healed. Some of, some of the elders here, they, they know the man I'm talking about was a soap maker and one Saturday in his factory because he won't be coming to work on Sunday he decided to mix some chemicals ready for Monday then by accident he fell and a bowl of acid fell a splash on his face everybody had gone home was there on the ground rolling in pain. It was later on that somebody was passing by and saw the door of the factory open. And he went in and saw him there and said, Ah, what's going on? They rushed him to the hospital. The doctor gave him first aid. And the doctor began to ask, Are you married? He said, Yes. Have you any children? He said, Yes. So you have one about the age of something, something? He said, yes. He said, why are you asking? He said, because the acid that eating your eyes, you will never see again. So for the rest of your life, you are going to need somebody who will lead you by the hand. He said, thank you very much. I've had your report. Help me to get a taxi, to take me to redemption camp. Let me go and hear the report of the Lord. So they brought him. That was several years ago, almost 40 years ago. 
when I saw him I'm telling you the truth my faith shook because the whole face was a mess you know what acid can do but of course <laughs> as a man of God <laughs> I had to put off a bold face <laughs> don't mind the doctor he's saying his own after all it's not God and I prayed by faith God restored the eyes and for several years he was reading without glasses I decree in the name of the one who made me everything that you have lost physically shall be restored today You have had me share the testimony. You have even heard it from another source of a young man who had cancer of the jawbone. Because his parents were wealthy people. He was being treated in the best hospital in London. After some time, the doctors called the parents and said, Hey, take your boy home if you want him to see his native land again because he has less than two weeks to leave when they brought him and somebody told them oh there's a pastor and they brought him to me and I saw him huh. his head was swollen about three times the normal size his throat was almost closed it took him more than one hour to drink a bottle of coke he was hungry but there was no way for anything to go down my faith shook but i cried to a god someone who is the god of all flesh that fellow is here alive today completely well they said he can never, never leave. He lived. They said he can never marry. He has children today. Ah, I pray for you today. That which I cannot do for you, the God of all flesh will do it for you today. Doctors can fail. Pastors can fail. Prophets can fail. The God of all flesh cannot fail. You will remember the story in John chapter 5 from verse 1 to 4, 14. John 5 from verse 1 to 14. It, it tells you about incurable cases by the pool of Bethesda. And he talks of a man who had been there for 38 years waiting for an angel to come and trouble the water. The angel kept coming year after year and the man never got healed because before he got into the river somebody has got down before him. But the day came when the one who made the angels showed up. I don't know how many times you have been coming to Holy Ghost service. I don't know how many times you have been coming to convention. I don't know how many times you have been coming to the Congress. But today, in the name that's above every other name, the one who woke me up this morning, who said I will walk, nobody will hinder. He will pay you a visit. So what are you to do? What's your, what's your own part? Number one, believe. Because Mark chapter 9 verse 23, Mark chapter 9 verse 23, Jesus Christ said, 
If you can only believe, all things are possible to him that believes. If you can only believe. And when it is time to pray tonight, one of the prayers we are going to pray is, because God, Jesus was talking to the father of somebody who was sick there. When he said to him, hey, if only you can believe, all things are possible to him that believe. The, the, the father said, I believe. But help thou my unbelief. In other words, if my faith is not enough, help me, all the same. Tonight, even if your faith is not enough, the Almighty God will help you. After you believe, then you go ahead and receive. Receive. In, 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 in Matthew chapter 9, from verse 27 to 31, Matthew 9, 27 to 31, the Bible talks about some, some people who came to Jesus Christ asking him for help and he asked them do you believe i can do this they say yes we believe and he said in that case receive be it unto you according to your faith and after you have received you demonstrate your faith by acting when jesus said to the man at the pool of bethesda Rise up, take your, your whatever your bed and go. It was when the man was trying to get up that strength came. Tonight, after we have prayed, you will demonstrate your faith. And the Almighty God will come through for you. And then, of course. When you've done that, you must testify. You must tell, tell the whole world, let the world hear what God has done for you. You know, all these beautiful testimonies we have had, whether you believe it or not, there are bigger ones that some people refuse. They just, they don't, they don't want to tell about it. They don't want to talk. You must learn to testify. Learn to tell others what God has done for you. And then, of course, you're going to ask. Because according to Matthew chapter 7, from verse um, seven all the way down the bible says it is when you ask that you shall be given we're going to ask we're going to ask him to, to make you whole and then he will answer you but Mills asked and he got and i'm going to encourage you to do your own asking like I did my own. Because like I told you yesterday, even though I was a sportsman, every two, two weeks, malaria fever would knock me down. Then I became born again. And I turned to the Almighty God and I said, Lord, heal me and I will serve you. And he healed me. And by the grace of God, from 1973 till now, I can't remember a time I suffered malaria fever because he healed me. Of course, he came back later on to say, <laughs> what about the other part of the baggage? He said, heal me and I will serve you. And I enjoy serving him. Many of you would love to serve God in good health, in perfect health. How many of you would love to testify about his goodness, about his mercy? Let me hear you shout hallelujah.
And so before we pray, there's one crucial aspect. When you read Mark chapter 2, from verse 1 to 12, thank you, Father. Oh, he said, somebody is asking, what about those of us who are not sick? Any miracle for us tonight? Daddy asked me to tell you, the miracle that will be for you today is that you will never be sick again. And so I know somebody will say, well, if we are never sick, then how are we ever going to die and go to heaven? You don't need to be sick to go to heaven. An uncle of mine woke up on a Sunday, Thanksgiving Sunday, went to church, danced like everybody else, came home, the wife Give him a, a, a light breakfast before preparing the original food, Panda Diam. And she was already pounding the yam when my uncle decided to go to the toilet. After she finished pounding, she knocked at the door of the toilet. When they opened the door, my uncle was gone. No sickness, no ache, no pain. Went to church, enjoyed himself. Uh, if the Lord tarries, that's how I will go. I go to church, enjoy myself, come home, eat pandedia, go. I decree concerning somebody here tonight. When it is time for you to go, you will not suffer at all. They, 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 won't, be, they won't be carrying you from one hospital to another. Uh, uh, uh. Now, in Mark chapter 2, <laughs> from verse 1 to 12, you know the story of the man brought by four men. They broke through the roof to lower him down before Jesus Christ. Everybody could see this fellow was sick. He came for healing. But the first thing Jesus Christ said to him is, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Not to get sin out of the way before healing can come. In John chapter 5, the story of the man by the pool of Bethesda, if you read it from verse 1 to 14, after that man was repositioned from the company of sick, incurable people, Jesus saw him and said, Hey, you have been made whole. Sin no more. So that something worse will not happen to you. God is going to make you whole tonight. <laughs> but first, he has to settle the issue of sin. Number one, before the healing itself will come, his blood has to remove all your sins. Number two, after he has made you whole, you must stay away from sin. So that a worse thing will not happen to you. I tell you a story more, and then I close. Some of the elders here will remember the man that was brought to Ibutemeta years ago. He was stiff. When I say stiff, he can't bend the hand. It can't bend the legs, it can't kneel down at all. So the hands were 
straight, the legs straight, everything stiff. We ask him, will you give your life to Jesus Christ? He said, ah, I'm ready. We prayed a simple prayer. And he became normal. For about two weeks, we were seeing him in church, coming to praise God and so And after some time, we didn't see him again. And so we decided to follow him up. Went to see him in his house. Brother, why are we not seeing you in church anymore? He said, ah, I came to your church and I was healed. He said, if you, if you are sick and you go to the hospital and you get healed in the hospital, do you stay in the hospital? <laughs> ah, hey, better, hey, you need to learn from the word of God so that uh, he said, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. He said, by the way, is it your church that healed me? We said, no, ah, it's God. Eh? He said, God is everywhere. Yes, sir. You can't argue with that logic. Oh, about six months later, I was coming from the University of Lagos where I was lecturing then. And this man was living around that area. And I saw the same man. Oh, oh. Not only had the hands stiff back, legs stiff back, now the mouth can't even close. You want to stay away from sin. Then, your wholeness will last forever. Those of you who have not yet received the Lord as your Savior, and you want Him to heal you tonight, He has to re deal with the sin in your life first. Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Before He said, take up your bed, rise up, take up your bed and go. So if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, you want the blood to wash away your sins, come now. I'm going to count from one to ten. Before I say ten, make sure you're already standing before the altar to come and cry to the Almighty God that His blood will wash away your sins. So begin to come now, one. And those of you who are clapping, your hands will never wither. Two. Three. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. 
nine. Okay, thank you very much. Those of you on the way, keep on coming. And those of you already in front, cry to the Almighty God. And say, Lord God Almighty, please save my soul tonight. Let your blood wash away all my sins. I want to become a child of God. I want to be a partaker of your healing power. I want to serve you for the rest of my life. Go ahead, cry to him. Say, Lord, have mercy on me. Save my soul. Let your blood wash me clean. And the rest of us, please, let's stretch our hands towards these people and intercede for them that the Almighty God who saved our souls will save their own souls also. Pray for them, brethren. Pray for them. Thank you, Jesus. If anyone is still coming, hurry up. Come very quickly. Yes, I'm about to pray. Yes, you're welcome. And as I'm praying now, please cancel us. I will want you to begin to come. My Father, my God, I want to thank you for your word. I want to thank you for these people who have come forward to surrender their lives to you today. Please receive them in Jesus' name. Amen. Save their souls. Amen. Let your blood wash away their sins. Amen. Write their names in the book of life. Amen. Receive them into the family of God. Amen. And from now, any time they call on you, answer them by fire. Amen. And let them serve you for the rest of their lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now I want to rejoice with those of you who have come forward. I uh, want to promise you from now on I'll be praying for you. So I'm going to need your names, your address, and your prayer requests so that I can know how to be praying for you. The counselors will come. They will collect the information I need from you. And we will wait for you so you finish before we go further with the program. Congratulations. God bless you. Please cancel us. Let's move a little faster.
Thank you, Lord. So we're going to do two things as instructed by Daddy. The first thing is that you are going to pray yourself. I'm going to give you about five minutes to pray. And the second thing is that hands are going to be laid on you in agreement. My wife will lay hands on our guests, the continental officers will lay hands on the choir, and all the other pastors will lay hands on the congregation. It's not going to take long. We're going to apply every principle. Almighty God said, if two of you shall agree as touching anything you ask on earth, it shall be done for you by our Father in heaven. The pastors will just lay hands on you in agreement that from now on you will never know sickness again. So you're going to pray just for about five minutes. Because if God asked that man by the pool of Bethesda, will you be made whole? If he had said no, he would have died sick. You need to tell God yourself that I want you to make me whole. I'm promising I will serve you. I will testify of your goodness. I will testify of your mercy. The whole world will hear my testimony. So let's stand on our feet and lift our voices to the Almighty God. Loud and clear and say, Father, this very night, make me whole, absolutely whole. I promise you, oh Lord, I will serve you. Oh, I will use my life to give you pleasure. Make me absolutely whole, Lord. Don't let my hand wither. Don't let my legs go lame. Don't let me ever know any form of sickness or disease again in my life. And I will serve you. I will, I will serve you. I will make your name known. I will tell the whole world how good you are. I will sing of your mercy. With my mouth will I make known your faithfulness to all generations. Heal me tonight, Lord. Open your mouth and call on him. Please, Lord, heal me. Make me whole. Completely. And don't let me ever know sickness again. Let me live the rest of my life in good health. Talk to him.
Thank you, Jesus. I ask him to please help your own belief. Lord, quicken my faith. Make my faith big enough to receive from you tonight. I believe you, but if my faith is not enough, help me all the same. Help my unbelief. Lord God Almighty, make me absolutely whole tonight. Reverse the irreversible. Oh, what human beings cannot do, do for me, my Lord and my Savior. Now give you all the glory. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Be it unto you according to your faith. May your testimony come before tomorrow morning. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's lift our hands to the Almighty God as I pray for you now. Oh, there are still some of you who have not yet been prayed for. No, I don't think so. Lift your hands to the Almighty God. My Father, my God, I want to say thank you. When you promise, you always fulfill your promises. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. It is in your name, Lord God Almighty, that I decree to all these your children, for the rest of your life, you will not know sickness again. You will never sleep in an hospital bed again. Before tomorrow morning, everything you couldn't do before physically, you will already be doing them. And for the rest of your life, you will serve God in good health, in tremendous strength. Your hands will never wither. Your legs won't go lame. Your eyes won't go dream. It shall be well with you. My God who has made you whole will keep you whole. Even by tomorrow, we will hear your testimonies. And you will serve God to the end. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let me hear you shout a victorious hallelujah. God bless you. I will see you tomorrow. Ministers of God, you are free to go home. God bless you. <laughs>